www.tmartisunlimited.com. Okay, gentlemen, whenever you're ready, lights, camera, action. All right, so here we gather today with my guys, Kevin Hamilton, Jave Me, and we are um, going to just discuss a few different things. And uh, we wanted to just have a real discussion about you know, how our lives have intersected and the things that we have going through from where we're from to going to the same school, which is Holy Cross College in Worcester, Massachusetts. And um, as me, Tori Thomas, I want to ask the first question to them. Uh, what made you choose Holy Cross? And they can answer as they wish. So I'm going to ask Jave first. What made you go to Holy Cross College? Uh, coming out of high school, I wasn't really uh, highly recruited. I played with uh, Omar Cook, who was an All-American point guard. So. In practice, I would play point guard against him, but in the games, I was like playing a small forward. So college coaches really didn't know what position I could actually play. So I went to a prep school. I was able to play my position. Uh, Coach Nickelberry saw me um, play in the summertime, and I did pretty well. He came to watch me. Coach Will came to watch me, and really that was a school that offered me first. And I, I jumped on it and it worked out. Uh, that's, that's great. That's a great thing, man. So, you know, just expound upon that. You're talking about a guy that has won many games at Holy Cross, three championships, and um, one of the top point guards in Holy Cross history, and he wasn't even heavily recruited at a, at a high school. So, this shows that. You know, your journey begins one place, but it can end another place. So, like I said, I'm gonna ask the same question to Kevin Hamilton. This is pretty similar. Uh, my, uh, <coughs> my junior year in high school, I was like four or five points a game or something like that. But I had a, um, I had a really good summer, and uh, Coach Willard came to see me at Eastern Invitational Camp. Mm -hmm. uh, throughout the summer, I got a lot of offers, or a couple offers, but. Holy Cross was the most persistent, was the first one on me, like, like Jave. And being able to play for Coach Will, that really was like the determining factor for me. Being able to play for somebody with that much experience uh, and his pedigree uh, really enticed me to go to Holy Cross. All right, that's great. Um, I mean, if I could answer my own question, um, I didn't have many schools either coming out of school. I probably had University of Hartford. I went to Lafayette. They didn't have scholarships at that time. And then, uh, for me to be able to go, uh, Coach Willard didn't even see me play, but um, when I heard about Holy Cross, it was through alumni, and then they said that they got a great program up there. They had a great point guard in Java that you could learn under, and you were my person that hosted the visit. So that really helped me make a decision once I didn't have much going on. I was player of the year in Connecticut, but I was always overlooked. But as we go on, I feel like I made the best decision. So I'll uh, ask the next one. Yeah, you got it. All right. Just kind of because it kind of ties into what you just asked. Mm -hmm. All of us have kind of similar stories. In the inner city kids, mm -hmm. uh, we could probably we're probably the only people from our areas that went to Holy Cross. Right? True. Um, somewhat under recruited. What did Coach Willis see? I mean, if you think about our careers, three championships, uh, top in the Patriot League and assists, top. Five in the picture we can see. Both, all three of us in steel. Five championships between us. Really successful time. What did Coach Willis see in all of us that maybe other people didn't see? You can answer that one. Man, I, I would say, like, if I could really pinpoint something, it had to be like character, integrity. They knew we came from some. He wanted tough kids on his team. That's what we learned from Coach. I feel like I learned that. And he wanted tough kids, so he saw that. We first had the ability to adapt to his, what he likes, because he's a tough coach. He's tough and he's demanding. So you had to be tough, thick skinned, mentally tough. That's how I would say he looked at our character and say, you know what, these guys can help us win. What do you think? Um, 
when Coach Willis first seen me play, uh, I played horrible. Mm -hmm. And he came up to me after the game, and I was like, I, I, in my mind, I was like, this, this is over. Like, that scholarship ain't gonna happen anymore. Definitely. I had like four points. It's the worst game I had in the yes. prep school year, mm -hmm. the game that Coach Willis came to. And I asked him later on, like, how come he still offered me the, like, the scholarship? I thought it was off the table. Mm -hmm. And he said it wasn't about any of the numbers that I put up, but what things he saw that he could bring out of me. So I think he saw in us that we had the ability, but just wasn't given the opportunity, and that we were willing to work for it. You know, that some people was given things from, from the jump, and, they, and they're not willing to work, you know? And they, like you said, they, their character might be flawed. So I feel like when I met you, Tori, when I met Kevin, you guys are like generally good people. You know, and if you get somebody who's a good person around you, then you can mold them to be a better person. And how can and then that person can make somebody else better. You know, and I think yes. as a coach, that's what you want to do. You know, you want to take that player or that person and make them better to hopefully they can later on change the world. And I think that that's what Coach Willis saw in us that we had the ability to affect other people in a positive way. Yes, uh, that was a great answer. Great question and great answer because I, you looked at it beyond what I saw because I'm thinking like they say when you get recruited you gotta have good body language you can't you know you don't want to show coaches anything so sometimes you just gotta bite the bullet even on bad games and you're very upset about it and you can't show like oh man I didn't do my best but he saw something beyond so I, I respect that what, do you, you want to answer that or you wanna... yeah, I think I think you guys covered it yeah you, you felt that same way. Yeah, I did. Because, you know, it was, it's a, it was an interesting time for, because previous to, uh, I mean, Gio was there, but I'm not, mm -hmm. I'm not sure. And Gio was that was, was that Coach Willis' recruiting class? I'm not Gio? sure. That's a good question. I don't think so. Mm -hmm. Because aside from that, they were, like, real all New York guards. Mm -hmm. Right. You know what I'm saying? So I'm not sure if that has something to do with the demographic. Mm -hmm. But, you know, it's very similar situations. Yeah. <clears throat> um, on highly talented teams in our areas, but still didn't get the recognition that some of us might have deserved. Right. Decent students, obviously, because mm -hmm. you know, to go to Holy Cross, you had to be. Exactly. But, uh, I mean, I think Coach Will had a talent for that. Like being able to not only pick somebody because of their talent, but because of their character. You know what That's I mean? Because right. we, we, we were all tough players. Exactly. We were different in our own way, but we made it work together like and that was great to win as many games at a school where wins aren't easy to come by as we see yeah. you know we've had some tough seasons out there so mm -hmm. you know losing since you know y'all started that that dynasty situation where you win in Patriot League championships we continue to win games and get a championship it, you know it was a special time yeah. because when times we didn't have all the internet that they have now you couldn't make your mixtape and start people just look on Instagram and, oh, let me look at that kid. It wasn't that, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. right? You re they had to come see you. Yeah. They had to, like you said, he had to come down there and see you. Now you don't got to see too many kids, in my opinion. They do still go to see their character, I thought, like, because they got to see what's behind the scenes from clips, yeah. right? And you got, I mean, you got to have a lot of admiration for Coach and his staff. Whereas, like I said, yes. Not just the winning, but individually, you all have really good careers. And those, yeah. are, those are back to back to back recruiting classes. That's true. When you're a coach, you know, me and him coaching at the high school level, but having an understanding, yeah. that's not easy. That's not easy to get like that type of production year after year after year. Yes, that's, that's, I mean, he shouted out Coach Nickelberry. I'm yeah. going to shout out Coach Doherty for recruiting me yep, and who recruited you. And I give that shout out because that coach has to go attack the situation. He did look and say, you know what? Let's give, and then Coach Willard never saw me play basketball at all. So well, that you you got no. a scholarship to the Holy Cross without, without even seeing. And that's a true story. You can ask Coach. I never saw. Well, you met up when he said mm -hmm. that. Yeah, he never he never seen. Like he just met you. He just met me as a thing. person. That's yes. what he was saying about yeah. the character. He met me. We had an hour long conversation in Trinity Catholic, where I went to high school, in a classroom. Yeah. That was it. And he offered the scholarship, like you said, that something that we already heard about y'all already. And I'm like, I could go up to. What's the mass and you know help be part of something special? Yeah. That's what made me make that decision. That's yeah. all right. Um being under different leadership, whether it's coaches or players, right? Name a 
time when your leadership style didn't work and how did it affect you and the team? Mm. So you want me to go? Yeah, All right, so, I mean, I would say that my leadership style didn't work um, what I played overseas one time, one year when I say that. We, I was more of a person that um, was more hands-on and directive. I might not talk so much, but I'm going to put, say, well, let's go there, go there, call this, play more demonstrative, but not in somebody's face. But they were saying I had to be even more vocal than that. Mm -hmm. So it didn't work because I was shocked to hear that. Like, you were shocked. So I'm, like, more lead by example. Like, let's go. I'm in practice. I'm working hard. And then, boom, they saying you ain't doing enough. That takes you back. Like, you're not doing enough. What am I supposed to do? So you learn from that experience because even with coach, he wants his point guards as we are and point guard and shooting guard to be the leader. But you have to know that every leadership style doesn't work for each team. So I had to really adjust. By playing overseas, it's more like way different than what, I, what anybody would expect. Like their word, the coach's word is, and then they could get you out of there soon. So you gotta adapt. They could tell you, you're not doing what they asking of you and you could get sent home. So I learned a lot from that, like being able to lead in a different way, you know? It's not, not the in your face. I was more in your face at Holy Cross, you know? Telling certain guys they gotta do this, they gotta do that. Coach Lula gave me that leeway. Some coaches don't like that. Mm -hmm. They wanna have all the control. I mean, you and I spoke about this the other day. Mm -hmm. I feel like my senior year, I mean, you know, we were still like a relatively successful team. But I mean, on the coach world, unless you win the championship, it's, it's not, right. that's not a successful season. I think that uh, that was the first time I was completely put in that type of situation. You know, it was a, coming off the junior year, being played the year and all that stuff, there was a lot of expectations. And I think I kind of took for granted the leadership that I was under, like playing with you, you know, and, and not having to, to, you know, you don't realize how difficult it is to be a leader until you're in that situation. And even the year after you, when we played with John Hardy and, and Greg Kinsey, you know, even though <coughs> I may have been like, you know, the guy production-wise that people looked at, they, they were leaders. They were people mm -hmm. that came into practice every single day and, and led us. They were our captains. They, uh, they accepted their roles. They, they were really diligent in their role. And then, you know, when I was a, when I was a senior, we had a really young team. And that was difficult for me to navigate easily. And, you know, but it was an experience. And as I got to play overseas, and I changed positions to playing point guard. Uh, I, I realized that you have to attack being a leader differently with different people. And the same, like, I can yell at Tori, and Tori won't be that personal about it. He'd be able to respond to it. And then there's some people that I'd be a little bit more sensitive. So it's a part of learning experience, but to speak to what you asked about a leadership situation I was putting, I feel like I failed because my senior year in college. Um, you want me to answer the question? Yeah, I do. Uh, I, so for me, my junior year was probably my most productive year. And we had Brian Wilson, we had Tim Zacco, Pat Wordy, Mark Jers, um, those were the seniors that were on the team. And um, having those guys, even though I was the point guard that ball was in my hands late in the game, and, you know, I'll be willing to, you know, take risk. Having those guys gave me a certain um, comfortability that I didn't really need to leave, so to speak, vocally. Like, people look to me mm -hmm. to bring up the ball and bring, and bring it home, mm -hmm. you know, but... Me getting on guys, really, I really have to do that because those guys were seniors and they already right. understood yeah. what had to be done, right. you know? So if we needed something done, I could count on Brian Wilson being here. I can dictate and direct in that manner. But when it came to me being a senior, you know, you, you, were, you were a freshman, was four right. freshmen came in. Right. Um, the yeah. other guys, um, uh, some of the guys didn't really like play as much. Mm -hmm. So me stepping back, and saying, oh, these guys already know how I lead, right? Right. right. Was something that I shouldn't have done because you didn't know me, mm -hmm. you know? Most of the guys, I mean, the new guys didn't know me at all, mm -hmm. you know? So me saying, okay, they gonna know when, when, the, when the game comes that I'm gonna turn it on mm -hmm. and I'm gonna lead in that way, right? Yeah. Right. But 
I didn't create that environment where guys could really trust me that didn't know me. You know what I'm saying? And I feel that with guys who haven't been on like quality minutes, right? Mm -hmm. Them not feeling comfortable in the situations that they now being placed in. I didn't really, I didn't alleviate some of the stress that they could have been feeling, you know? And the way the team was structured, it was a totally different team, you know? So I couldn't do the same thing. You know, we couldn't play the same way that we that we did when you had right. Pat Worthy, who was the right. player of the year, Tim Zach, who was the player of the year before right. that, yeah. you know? Yeah. And that leadership, I wish I had another year, or I wish maybe I would have read something and realized that, you know, I gotta, I, gotta, I gotta step out of that. Because I did step out my freshman and sophomore year, I think my junior, I became more of a leader. I was willing to talk and practice, and I think I should have carried that over to the next year. I, I didn't do and I wish I had another year to do that over or I wish I would have read something or I wish I would have like someone would have talked to me mm -hmm. you know and saying this is how you this is how you have to lead you know and it's not on coach Willard it's not on any of the any yeah. other other coaches that was me feeling maybe too comfortable you know we won three championships you know not to say I wasn't working hard because mm -hmm. I was working hard you know That's but right. in that mind state it gotta be I mean in that and that when you're in that position it gotta be more than just physical, you know what I'm saying? Like, you're going to be a leader, you got to be in everybody's mental, too. Yeah. You know? And, I, and I, I don't think I worked on yeah. that, you know, because the teams I was with already had seniors, already had leaders. Every team yeah. I was on, we already had somebody who was already leading. So when you a secondary leader, mm -hmm. so to speak, and then my junior year, it's like a little different, right. you know what I'm saying? So and you was your lone senior. I was the, I was the only lone senior, senior, so yes. that was so difficult for me. Yeah. yeah. And in your, in your case, too? I think it was like it's exceptionally difficult because you lost what, four or five seniors the year before. And yeah. You guys have also played together for three years. Yeah. But also there was like I, mean, I dealt with it probably you probably dealt with it more so than I did. But, you know the expectations. Yeah. I mean like you had won three championships. You were preseason player of the year. You were. Mm -hmm. you know, and I think even within our team there was like this. I mean you could speak to it being the freshers like don't let Javé down type of pressure that was. Mm -hmm. On top of us, you're on you the mean, cover. Of course, course. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, cover for you, play, defending, defending the uh, the yeah, that's it, exactly. And I mean, coming in, I could say that all we heard was good things, and y'all proved it. You were the leader of these teams, and that's added pressure mm -hmm. by yourself. So it's hard to say, oh, I could have did this and that, because you did everything. But we had to be able to, as a unit, I think, even with the young guys, because coach. I would say through me, like if we, my my question that I would have asked y'all is like the memorable moments. If y'all gave me two, I could give you two or three of memorable. One happened my first time ever stepping on the court at the Holy 18, Cross. You know what I'm saying? 18, right? Yes, I remember that. I had my memorable first moments. Right? That we had Media Marches Eliminate.com